citizens, then the teachers are police officers. And if the teachers are police officers, now you see why they care more about how your son acts as opposed to whether he learns. And that's why you can go into any learning support classroom in Baltimore. You can go to any emotional support classroom where the boys are diagnosed as emotionally disturbed, which is really European disturbance. And half the boys in special ed are smarter than all the boys in regular. Right. But they're in special ed, why? Because they didn't bend to the white racist structure. Let me explain something to you about conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder. Homosexual and effeminate black boys don't get those diagnoses. When's the last time you saw a soft young man diagnosed with a conduct disorder? See, the public school is based on maintenance and perpetuation of the American social order. So when the children come in, they have to acquiesce to the white racist American social order. And if your behavior is not in line with what white people want you to be like, then you have a conduct disorder. The boys who are being labeled are the leaders of tomorrow. The ones who had the guts to walk out of the schools are the ones we need to be grabbing because they're the leaders. Unfortunately, a lot of the ones who bring remain behind. And we don't want none of them dropping out, but we got to recognize something. In order for you to make it through public school, in order for you to make it through your undergrad, in order for you to get that master's, in order for you to get your doctorate, at least 25% of black men have to adopt an effeminate pose. And that's why if you look at many of the universities right here in Maryland, you'll see that the black men who have been able to make it to the highest rung huh, within those educational institutions have two and a half pints of sugar in their tank. <laughs> and y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. He said, what is it about this damn college? Every black man is soft as hell. That's because in order to get there, they had to change their behavior. And unfortunately, white supremacy is creating a homosexual world order in the black community. So in the next 10 years, any black man who wants to be successful in politics, economics, music, business, industry, higher education, the church, is going to have to bend over and sacrifice something. What does the Bible say? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his asshole? The reason so few black children are diagnosed as mentally gifted is because mental giftedness was created in 1954, the same year as Brown versus Board, to give white people the opportunity to resegregate white kids from black. Because they can no longer say it was because of skin color, they simply said that Suzanne was smarter than Rashida. And so mental giftedness became an excuse to resegregate. And still worse, the reason why you see so few mentally gifted black children in Baltimore is because a couple years ago, the federal government took giftedness out of the special ed register, which means whenever I classify one of your children as gifted, the school doesn't get any extra money like they do when I say they're retarded, like they do when I say they're autistic, like they do when I say they are learning disabled. So guess what they're doing in the inner city schools? Since we're not getting paid, to find smart black kids, we ain't concerned with them. So I'm telling you now, if anybody in here thinks your child is gifted, you're gonna to have to write a letter to the principal and say, I believe my son, my daughter meets state guidelines for mental giftedness and I want them evaluated. And then when they get the report back, if they try to say they didn't qualify because their IQ score was a 127 and a 128 or a 129, instead of 130, which is very superior to national cutoff, guess what? They can't keep your child out of gifted just because they fell a few points forward. The law clearly states that you cannot use an IQ score by itself to rule out MG. We gotta look at his test scores. We gotta look at his report card grades. We gotta look at his in-class performance. We gotta listen to what the teacher had to say. We gotta look at the educational record. And that's why you're gonna get my business card. Because if I ever need to look at a report, my fax number's on there, you fax me the report, you leave me a voicemail or an email, and say, I just sent you my son's report, his name is such and such, my phone number is such and such. I'm going to pull up the report. We're going to go over it on the phone, and I'm going to let you know whether or not it was bullshit. And if it was, <laughs> and if it was, you have a right to do what, parents? Every parent in America, remember, special education is a federal program, so it applies to the whole country. What you're hearing now is for every black child in America. 
You have a right to an IEE, independent educational evaluation. You've never heard this before because they don't want you to know this. This is your right. I know because I do them all the time. Independent educational evaluation. That's when you go out and find your own psychologist to retest your child in the school district gets the bill. All right. See, this is the re-education tool, so we're going to do a lot of re-educating tonight. Because after the day, I don't want to hear nothing about my son is special ed and I don't think he should be there. If you don't want him in, you call an IPD and say exit him and they got to take him out. These are your rights, but we don't know them. Educational law. If there's anybody in here considering going back to grad school, consider two things. Either getting your school site certification or become an educational attorney. We need black educational lawyers. It's been a long time since we had Thurgood Marshall and Charles Hamilton Houston. Right. We need black folk who specialize in school law. Not only would you make a big difference, you would also make a lot of money at the same time, which would give us the type of capital we need to build our own damn school. All right. And speaking of schools, I don't know of any school in this country. In fact, I don't know of a school on this earth. I've been to the Caribbean, I've been to Africa, I traveled to America. I don't know of one school that teaches black children what they need to be taught and how. Show me the best charter school in Baltimore and I'll show you the best school that does the best job of teaching black kids how to act like white people. Show me the best private school and I'll show you the best school that teaches black children how to serve white people a little bit better than the rest. What is the goal of education? In order to provide it, you must know what you're doing it for. The purpose of education is to train your children in the art, the art of acquiring and protecting power. Any curriculum that does not teach black children how to acquire and protect power is a slave curriculum. Chinese children are not being taught how to work for corporate America. They're being taught how to acquire and maintain power. And so there's six subjects that all black children need to be taught. And at the Frederick Douglass of August Garvey Pan-African Independence Academy, they're going to get it. And at the Anna Douglas and Amy Jakes and Ashwood Garvey Independence Academy for black girls, young women, they're going to get it. The first one is political and military science. Political and military science. Yes, they're going to get history because history is required, so I don't even mention that. But I'm getting sick and tired of you Negroes in here going crazy over Egypt, turning our culture into the world's fourth largest religion. Culture is not supposed to be a religion. I don't care how many trips you take to Kemet, you ain't going to solve your problems that way. Ain't not one of them mummies woke the hell up yet, and they won't be. You're going to have to solve your problems yourself. And many of us are using the damn religion as an excuse to culture, as an excuse not to struggle. All we got to do is learn who we are. Bullshit. It ain't just about learning about what you were. You got to learn how to win in this game right here and right now. Yes, you're supposed to know the greatness of ancient Ethiopia, but you better also know what the International Monetary Fund is. Yes! I want you to know the kingdoms of Zimbabwe, but I want you to know what the Trilateral Commission is. Yes! I want you to know all the dynasties of Kemet, but I need you to know who created the AIDS virus and why. Our children need a historical and a political education. So why don't you see political education being taught to black children? Because political education can get scary for Negroes who don't want to step on white people's toes. Right. And that's why you don't find any black school teaching political science in high school. Because you're dealing with current affairs and current events. White folk don't give a damn about you going back 10,000 years. But soon when you come up to 2012, and start dissecting the political structure, now they get worried because you're waking people up. Yes, you can use history to wake up your children, but I've also seen history put a whole generation of black people to sleep with a dashiki on. <laughs> See? I'm a Garveyite. A Pan-African nationalist to the core. My flag is red, it is black, it is green, and it will never change. Because in August of 1920, 25,000 black people coming from all corners of the world came to Madison Square Garden. Some risked death, some risked incarceration, some of them swam. But they came together and said, guess what? We are one race today, with one flag today. And we'll be damned if anybody's going to tell us that we don't have a right to Africa.
Africa. Africa is ours, and Africa is yours, and you better understand that until you improve the condition of your mother continent, all of her children will suffer and die. You think you can become an equal citizen with white folk without an international ally to back you up? How do you think Fidel Castro lasted so long? He was a drop in the ocean off the tip of Florida. They wanted to kill him and never could because he had an international ally called Russia. We are a nation within a nation, and a nation needs allies. And if you want to improve the treatment of black folk in America, you best improve the condition of Africa. Any Negro who thinks he's going to achieve freedom without Africa being free is a fool. In fact, spiritually speaking, if you don't know how to treat your mother, you don't get good luck any damn way. And for us, turning our back on Mother Africa, we'll never get the type of help we need from our ancestors in the first place. You want to give up the richest continent in the world for a damn North American wilderness. Not me. But when I'm on a plane it's going to Africa, half the airplane is Korean. Half the airplane is East Indian. Half the airplane is British. I don't want to go to Africa, it's too hot. White folk die in that damn sun, but they still go. I don't want to go to Africa because I don't want to get malaria. Koreans catch it, get rid of it, and they right back on the plane. If you don't get rid of your self-hatred, your self-hatred will kill you. Propaganda. 95% of all information that comes to you Radio, television, internet, magazine, newspaper comes from five corporations and the CEO of all five of the world's largest communication companies sit at the round table of the Council on Foreign Relations. The two largest are AOL, Time Warner, and Disney. When most of us think of Disney, we don't think about white supremacy. We don't think about mass communications. But Disney is the largest communications corporation in the world. The largest. Let's go back in history. Did you know that Elmer Fudd was supposed to be a black man? And that's why he spoke with Ebonics. And at the 11th hour, they changed his face from black to white. If you do your research, you will find some of the original paintings of what Elmer Fudd was supposed to look like. Remember the Tasmanian devil? Where did the Tasmanian devil come from? The little short black thing that ran around real fast that came from Australia, an island called Tasmania, where the British went in and decimated, killed, exterminated every Australian, excuse me, Tasmanian woman, man, and child. There are no Tasmanians left in the world today. Don't you sit there and think that your extermination ain't possible. White folk think that it is. And the reason why you don't get no help from God in solving your problems is because God cannot help a coward. And because you already got the tools you need to overcome your enemy, God can't give you any more of a helping hand because to help you any further would be a cripple. Right, right. Not to mention that many of you praying to Willie Lynch any damn way. You still got that white Christ on the wall in your house. I know you do. Because when I go into the home to test our children, he be staring at me when I'm giving our IQ test. He stares at me on the way to the bathroom. He stares at me when I take a sip of water. And one time, the faggot winked at me. Where did the Last Supper picture come from? Did you know that prior to 1482, prior to Leonardo da Vinci being commissioned to paint the Last Supper, there wasn't a European Christ anywhere on Earth? Was it a coincidence? That the last Christ came to you exactly 10 years before Columbus set sail in 1492? That was no coincidence. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is not the gun, it's the white Jesus figure. Think deeply about it. Many of our women try to emulate on a daily basis the white Jesus figure. One of the reasons why Barack Obama is so popular, because he resembles the white Jesus figure. Leonardo asked his uncle to sit in his Christ. He needed 12 disciples, so he went to the local jail and got 12 pedophiles to sit in. If you don't believe me, do your research. Everything I give you today is a fact. I don't believe in speculation. So anybody in here who got those 13 crackers on your wall, I want you to know that you condone the pedophilia and white crime. To have a white Jesus is to be an agent of white supremacy. 
How the hell are you gonna pray to a white guy and expect black solutions? All you doing is strengthening the enemy's energy against you. And let me say this, black folk: you don't have to give up your Islam. You don't have to give up in Christianity. You don't have to give up anything you do, but you're gonna have to do what? Join it with an African spiritual tradition. I have studied our political circumstance, and I have come to the conclusion that one of the reasons why we keep on losing. Although Nanny of the Maroons won. One of the reasons we keep on losing, although Nat Turner won. One of the reasons we keep on losing, although Queen Anzinga won, is because they invoke the ancestors and you never do. All right, all right, yeah. The church and the mosque are telling you to pour libation to your ancestor is shirk and polytheism. But they ain't got a problem with you calling on a uh, cracker popes. And they ain't got a problem with you calling on the Khalifa of Muhammad ibn Abdullah. They ain't got a problem with you calling on the angels. So if you could call on dead Muslims and dead Christians, why in the hell can't you call on your living dead? All right, all right. If you don't call on grandma, she won't help you. Right. If you don't call on great grandfather, he won't help you. If you don't call on great, great, great grandmother, they won't help you. This is a spiritual war. And you can get the political right all day. But if the denominator is wrong, you will fail. How the hell you want to pray to God and not acknowledge the family tree members who brought you to this earth from God? Right. In the African tradition, we have a spiritual hierarchy. You don't just go to the king looking for help. You got to go through the chain of command. If you want to speak to Minister Farrakhan, you don't call him on the cell phone. You gotta talk to his lieutenants, his captains, and then you go with the chain of command. Why? Because if it could be done by somebody down here, it's no need for you to burn the man up there. Right. The spiritual world happens the same way. Somebody told you that you call on God, 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 that is disrespectful. You're supposed to go through your ancestors first. Because about half of your problems can be solved with grandma and grandpa. But they don't want shit to do with you because you don't want nothing to do with them. But in order to call on them, you got to know who they are. Most of us can't go past grandma. We all got four trees and I suggest you start studying because we got to raise the ancestors. They calling out to be raised up. They want to be raised up to help us, but the spiritual world only focuses and functions on intention and will. So if you don't want help from your living dead, they won't give it to you. How do you think the Haitian Revolution was successful? Bookman Dada, not to sign, not in for a desolate, but it was Bookman Dada who gave the call to arms after they had a voodoo ceremony. Right. Haiti is free now because of the ancestors. Why do you think Shaka, the center of the the king of the Zulus, never had to fight the British? They had guns, he had spears, and they were scared as hell because Shaka would go to the priest and the priestesses and ask, How should we move out? How do you think Menelik II beat the Battle of Ottawa, the Italians, in 1896? White people said, are you crazy, king of Ethiopia? With your weapons and your manpower, taking on a modern army, you will be exterminated. And Menelik said, we'll see about that. He went and he consulted the spiritual hands. Queen and Zinga, Nanny of the Maroons, Nat Turner, the spiritual hands. You don't. I take my ancestors with me everywhere I go. And you best start taking yours. Because if you're going to fight this war without your spiritual army, you will lose it. Because the white man got his. They always invoke Thomas Jefferson. They always run around George Washington. They got every cracker they ever had fighting with them. They got their spiritual army, and you ain't got yours. I didn't say drop your religion. I said add a little spice to it. Bird tells me, Viacom, Rupert Murdoch News Corporation. We know BET was sold to Viacom for $2 billion in the year 2000. I wasn't too upset with that because it was black extermination television any damn way. BET did more to exterminate the black male image than anything on Fox, than anything on ABC, than anything on NBC. But what makes it so bad is that they got other people to replace it. You got Tyler Ferry out there. <laughs> Spooked ass Lee is out there. John Simpleton is out there. How in the hell can a black film producer afford to make movies 
about bamboozled ass topics and negative stereotypes about black men and women and goofy ass comedies when we've never seen a real movie on the Marcus Garvey movie, largest of all time. We've never seen a real movie on the Nat Turner insurrection. We've never seen a movie on the Haitian revolution. We've never seen a true movie about the enslavement of Africans. Now some of you want to say Roots. <laughs> roots was rooted in lies. Did you know that Alex Haley was sued because it was discovered by another author that he took significant portions of his book and incorporated it into Roots? You didn't know that. Did you know that Alex Haley was an informant for the FBI and deliberately kept out three chapters out of Malcolm X's autobiography? That's right. Listen to me. You got to study everybody you struggle with. Because half the Negroes in this room right now, and I don't know your person, but only half of you are real. The other half is no good. Because we are house to lie. CIA in here right now. FBI in here right now. Some Negro looking to get rich off of his own people's sweat is in here right now. You got to study black people. Who betrayed Steve Biko? Patrice Lumumba was cut up into little teeny pieces because of a stone cold ass traitor from the Congo. Mobutu says so say, go kiss my ass. <laughs> Who was paid by the United States government to take out Lumumba. Why? Because Lumumba said if you want the diamonds and the gold and the gas and the oil, you pay for it. That's right. And they said, we don't think so. Let's see if we can get his next in line to do away with. So you got to study black people because a lot of us got the psyche of the white man. Some of us are more white than the white man. That's why he uses us before he uses himself. Right. The black bourgeoisie, we'll get to that in a minute. All major media giants sit at the table of the CFR, Bilderberg, and service government propaganda agents. $500 billion is what they spent on mind control. In America, you got 1,449 TV stations, four major networks, 10,000 radio stations, 1,500 daily papers, 7,000 weeklies. 17,000 magazines and only nine film studios. Why only nine film studios? Remember this, who works for the FBI and the CIA? The top mental scientists in this country. They sit down with psychologists to find out what to do next. And the psychologists have thoroughly informed them that if you want to keep a people asleep, or if you want to wake them up, control their music and control their movies based upon 16th century church education. With the primary goal of social conformity and perpetuation of the American social order, black boys in particular are singled out for feminization and premature referral to the juvenile justice system. Black children are doomed to always trail other children on academic and IQ tests created for white people, by white people, and in the interest of white people. Stop chasing these standardized tests. The tests were designed by eugenicists. They were rigged to make sure your child always do less well than the whites. They were created for and by whites and in their own interests. Furthermore, one of the biggest reasons why our children continue to trail Asians and whites is because the average Asian child spends 15 hours a week studying outside of school. And the average white kid, eight hours outside of school. And the average Negro boy, only spends 45 minutes a week studying outside of school because you got him thinking he's going to the NFL and the NBA. And when his ass don't get there, he end up on the corner and later on in jail. Do you know that most state correctional institutions in this country look at the reading level of black boys at the end of the fourth and fifth to determine how many prisons they'll need in another decade? If your son can't read by the time he finishes the fifth, there's a 75% chance he never will. Criminals are made. They're being engineered from DC, engineered from downtown Baltimore, engineered from the state capital of Maryland. Right. They are breeding inmates, breeding them like they bred slaves. Yeah. And we ain't doing nothing about it. So we gotta teach our children political and military science, and we also gotta recognize what? There is no culture without agriculture. Black children got to be taught how to grow their own food to study the science of the 
the soil. You mean to tell me that George Washington Carver, first black man with a doctorate degree from Iowa State, showed up at Tuskegee at the request of Booker T. Washington and didn't even have a science lab. And George Washington Carver, the greatest scientist to ever set foot on American soil, went to the trash dump of Tuskegee and took old plastic from the trash, old metal from the trash, old glass from the trash, and from the garbage of white people. He gave you more than 200 products from the peanut, from the garbage of white people. More than 300 products from the soybean, from the garbage of white people. And we sit here with a trillion dollar economy talking about what's the next damn move. Your problem ain't white people, it's the white man living inside. What I want to do is get all the ministers together the Negro ones in church. Since they like performing baptisms, I want their ass to start baptizing that white man outside of you. Baptize that white girl outside of you. Dip her water for that. And let the white energy get the hell up out of us. Be careful who you go to for therapy. Some of you are looking for therapists, that's good. We do need them. Some of you need your children and you can somebody to talk to them because they ain't got a good relationship with you. None of us is perfect. It's okay if you messed up, parents. Our children are not born with an instructional name. Stop being so damn hard on yourself. Because when you over-criticize yourself, black mom and daddy, grandmom and grandpa, you then induce depression. And a depressed person can't be an effective parent because you're too lazy and tired to do so. So give yourself a damn break. And make sure you engage in self-care. Black woman, I know you're strong. I know that you was worshipped as a god way before Islamic Christianity turned God from a woman to a man. I know that. But you do need to time out too. And sometimes you gotta take a day and go get your feet done, go get your nails done, go relax. Spend a day in a hotel all by yourself. I didn't say give up your husband's cookie, I said all by yourself. <laughs> and relax and renew yourself. Because it's difficult raising children with the war that we got out here and some of us ain't taking care of ourselves. Black men? We gotta start forming black men healing groups. Sisters, y'all need healing groups. Black people are in pain, and you can't beat the white man when you're half dead already. How you gonna go to war with him when you're half dead already? You see the way we walk through the streets, just ready to pass the hell out at any moment. <laughs> Political science, agricultural science. The next one is what? Spiritual science. We gotta teach our children the hierarchy that you deal with your ancestors first. You don't worship them, you communicate with them. Then you deal with your Netaru or your Orisha, whatever spiritual system you use, God's spiritual army. And then once you went to the ancestors that went to God's spiritual army, then you go to the creator. You don't worship the Netaru, you don't worship the ancestors, you only worship the one God. That is an African principle, but we communicate with the unseen. Because when, by doing that, you maximize your power for positivity. Remember, black people, unity, black unity is immunity from your oppressor's will. All right. Black unity is immunity from your oppressor's will. The reason why most of our movements get stopped out is you got 10 people trying to fight a war for 40 million. That will never work. That will never work. Masses, white supremacy only respects three things. Blood, money, and numbers. To hell with the blood, we don't make no bullets yet. But we can sure organize that dollar. And we can sure organize our numbers. Black parents gotta be organized. Black men gotta be organized. Black women gotta be organized. Black psychologists, black nurses, everybody gotta be organized. The problem is too many of our black professional organizations are only interested in looking better than the rest of us. All right. And this is why I hardly go to them. I belong to them, but I'm not interested in being a part of any bourgeois clique. I'm for grassroots change. But if you're looking for a therapist, evaluation or therapy, 
you go to the Association of Black Psychologists website, which is A as in association, B as in black, P as in psychology, S-I. A-B-P-S-I dot org, O-R-G. You click on find a psychologist, your state will come up. You click on your state, and it'll be a list of black psychologists who are members of the ABSI. Now, some black psychologists are not members of ABSI. Their names may not be on the website. If you have trouble finding someone, then you email me, and I'll hit you with a referral. No more cracker counseling. It's killing you. All right. All right. It's killing you. And don't you ever send your child who's having sexual identity issues to white people. Because what does Sigmund Freud say about homosexuality? What did Carl Jung say about homosexuality? What did Alfred Adler say about homosexuality? They said there's absolutely nothing wrong and it is totally normal for an adolescent boy to sodomize another on his way to becoming a man. If you don't believe me, do your own research. ADHD, this is absolutely ridiculous. How much money is Wall Street making off this medicine? $50 billion a year. They might be making more off ADHD than the Koreans making off a hair. All right. Well, maybe not quite, but they're close. <laughs> you mean to tell me that our boys are being doped up because they can't sit still long enough for the white woman's needs? What does the research tell us about white women and black boys? It says that teachers are more likely to pay more attention to the children in the classroom who look the most like their own kids at home. So if your son is dark with curly hair and big lips, I'm likely to go into his classroom, and not only will I find him sitting at the back, I'm likely to find him facing the back wall. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I've had to check a couple principles. How the hell you got a teacher with a black boy facing the back? And then when he fails, first thing, special education. Listen to me. Half the kids who are sent to me for evaluations do not have learning disabilities. They got poor parenting disabilities. And the teachers got instructional disabilities. Furthermore, half the black kids in special ed simply ain't been the hell taught. Are y'all listening to me? Half the black boys in fourth grade right now can't read on their grade level in America. Half the black boys in fourth grade can't read on their grade level in America. Do you know what that means? If we don't do something as a community, half the black boys in fourth grade right now will be in jail in 15 years. This is not oppression. This is not repression. This is not suppression. This is an extermination. It is a mass killing. A mass killing. The question is, how long are you going to sit there and do nothing about it? Where's your hospitals? Where's your supermarkets? Where's your distribution networks? Where's your airplanes? Where's your army? You have no community infrastructure. Yes. We're going to get our reparations. Yes, we are entitled to our reparations. But we must build the community infrastructure before we get it. Do you know why? If you gave black people $100 trillion tomorrow, white folk will be $100 trillion richer on Tuesday night. <laughs> are y'all following me? Your money would go in the bank and it would go right back out to the white people who gave it to you. You need infrastructure to make sure the money stays inside. White people keep telling black people, if you don't like being here, go back to Africa. Okay. I'm a Pan-Africanist. I do believe I got to go back home. Because the United States of America ain't giving you no southern states for you to build a black nation. No sovereign nation has ever created a nation within its borders, so that ain't going to work. So we will have to go back home. However, white man, here's the deal. If we go back home, you're going to pay us reparations, not only for the 243 years here, but the time in the Caribbean, the time in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, with cost of living increases by every year since 1865, with interest. Second, you are going to give us back everything we invented that you use. And if you want to use it again, you apply for a patent to use it. Give me my damn cell phone. That ain't yours. Give me my helicopter, that ain't yours. Give me my internet, that ain't yours. Give me my refrigerated truck, that ain't yours. Give me my rocket launcher, that ain't yours. Give me back half the medicines I created so your white people can live longer, they not yours. One more thing, 
cheap crack. In addition to my reparations for cost of living increases. In addition to you giving me back all my patents for everything you done stole, you are never again to buy anything out of the ground of Africa at a surplus discounted rate. You will pay full market value for the diamonds. You will pay full market value for the oil. You will pay full market value for anything that you want. And if we get those three conditions, yes, good the hell buy. I got some bad news, Baltimore. Next year, March of 2013, the American Psychiatric Association is coming out with the DSM-5, the binder that we use to diagnose our disorders. We're under DSM-4 right now. DSM-5 is coming out in March of 2013. And it's a group of psychiatrists in the American Psychiatric Association who want the diagnosis of pedophilia taken out of the book. If you don't believe me, go to the American Psychiatric Association website and look up the various task force on the new DSM. There's a group of white people who do not think there's anything wrong with grown people having sex with children. But why are you shocked? Up until 1974, homosexuality was a disorder. Homosexuality only been normal for 37 years. In 1972, the Rockefeller World Population Council had a meeting with Planned Parenthood where they decided that homosexuality should be treated as normal and then pushed into the black community as an alternative way of life to do what? Cut your numbers down. I want you to be against homosexuality because if you're for it, then you're for black death. If everybody in this audience decides to only cohabitate with people of the same gender, where does the next generation of black children come from? Right, right, right. Homosexuality is the number one weapon in the black population control war. Do you think it's a coincidence that Nigeria is the most populated nation on the continent and they have a gay pride parades? Right. Do you think it's a coincidence that Ghana is the beacon of pan-Africanism? And they had a gay pride parade there two years ago. Do you think it's a coincidence that President Obama, your president, not mine, is engaged in a tug of war with the president of Ghana and Uganda right now? Why? Because in most African nations, it's illegal to have sex with somebody of the same gender. That's not our culture. But Obama is telling Ghana and Uganda that if you don't change the laws, and allow sexual freedom, I'm going to instruct the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to cut off your loans. So either your people will starve or gay rights will prevail. You got a decision to make. That's why we got to teach political science in the schools. In 1973, the American Psychiatric Association had its convention. They voted for homosexuality to be taken out of the book. 1974, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger wrote his National State Security Memorandum 200. You can download the full text from the internet. N-S-S-M 200. N, as in no good, S-S-M 200. And type in full text. You get the full NSSM law, which was totally about what? Black population control. Henry Kissinger said we should start teaching sex education in the schools. Why do you think you got sex education in 1980? So black kids can stop catching sexually transmitted diseases? So black girls will know what to do so they don't get pregnant? No! Sex education was a prelude to homosexual education. All right. What did Obama do? Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, built an all-gay high school in Chicago. Did you know the homosexuals have their own school in Chicago? Wow. Then he went back and got another man, Kevin Jennings, and Obama put him in charge of what? Safe and drug-free schools. How the hell the school would be safe when a homosexual running? Do you know President Obama made history? He has appointed more gays and lesbians to federal office than any other president in history. And more than Bush and Clinton did in all 16, and he only been there for three. Wow. And he got Al Sharpton telling you to leave him alone. Right. And you listening to that damn sellout eye. 
used to walk around with a sweatsuit and a leather coat in the sun with a nappy ass perm, and now he looked like he belongs to one of the mafia five families. Three piece suit every day, sharp perm. <laughs> Al Sharpton is a functionary of the Obama administration. Right. That's all he is. You gotta study your black aristocracy. The Civil Rights Bill of 1963 created by the federal government a black bourgeoisie. We always had a middle class, but this was a state-sanctioned middle class. So in Baltimore, you got who? Some black people with PhDs and side Ps and JPs and MDs. They're professors, superintendents, and their job is to do what? Confuse you about your real issues. You got black people in Baltimore who got TV shows and radio shows where they write for the newspaper, but they write about everything except the right thing. You got people in Baltimore who got big time money, billions of dollars. They're rich blacks, but won't give you a damn cent. Because all rich black people in America know that if one of the state rich, you better never spend a penny with your own. That's why Oprah Winfrey had to go to South Africa to build a school. You mean to tell me you from Chicago with the worst public school in America? And one of the largest? And instead of building a school for them, you go halfway across the world. And get me, don't get me wrong, I'm a Pan-Africanist. I respect what she did, but why not drop one down in Chicago? Jay-Z, all that damn money, you ain't got a penny for Brooklyn. 50 Cent, all that damn money, you ain't got a penny for Queens. Will Smith, all that damn money, Bill Cosby. You did nothing for North Philadelphia. Because we don't hold them accountable. And then you gotta deal with the religious aristocracy. Listen to me, you heard it here first. Um, any wrong is not the only pedophile amongst the megachurch ministers. I'm not gonna let it out till it come out in the news. But I know people who know people who know people. And I know that some of those other ones are also playing with children. And this is why they back any wrong when he committed his wrong. So keep your eyes wide open. Remember, whoever you follow could lead you to heaven or lead you to hell. And if your pastor is committing wrong, then he ain't serving the Lord, he's serving the devil, which makes you a demon. We come to the conclusion, mass incarceration. Did you know that black people's population in every state in this country is three times our population in that state? Our incarceration rate is three times the population in every state in America. Let me give you an example. Pennsylvania, which I call North Texas. <laughs> and why do I call it North Texas? Pennsylvania has the largest percentage of state federal incarceration institutes of any state in the Northeast Corridor. And the northeastern section of America Baltimore, New York, PA, Connecticut, etc. Collectively have more federal pens than any other area in this country. Black people are 10% of Pennsylvania and 50% of jails. Damn. This is for every state. Every state. But in order for us to stop the prison incarceration thing, you know what we gotta do? We gotta stop the miseducation thing. See, the first stage is miseducation. Teach the black boy to hate himself, love white people, and if possible, feminize or homosexualize him. Second stage, psychiatric medicine. If the white woman can't break your son's spirit, they break him with, with drugs. If the drugs ain't successful, Juby Hall. If Juby Hall ain't successful, they simply kick his ass out, expulsion. Now he's psychologically frustrated and alienated, and that leads to boom, suicide or homicide. And by the way, the black homicide rate is, excuse me, the black suicide rate is higher than the homicide rate. Percentage-wise, when you raw murder, you get more homicide. But percentage, the percentage of black teenage boys killing themselves has increased 800% since 1980. In Philadelphia, when I was with the school system before I had to leave because I was too sick, I was on a crisis response team. Do you know that I was called every year, at least five times, to a school where there was a successful or attempted suicide? And one school in North Philadelphia, which is now closed down, three black boys killed themselves all within the span of three months. Our boys need us, gentlemen. 
and we gotta start being mentors. And I'm getting sick and tired of hearing black men say the only way they can be a mentor is if there's some grant money in it. Why the hell do somebody got to pay you to spend time with a young black man? What the hell do you need money for? For two hours a week. And my challenge to all black organizations is what? You better have youth in them. Too many of our conscious movements ain't got no damn place for children. And we barely got a place for women. All we want the sisters to do is cook, take notes.